today's video I'm going to be working on the kitchen I've actually got three parts of the kitchen that I want to do so the oven that I'm going to be showing in this video I'm also going to work on the fireplace and the flooring all at the same time so I'll split them into separate videos but this is the one where I'm going to be showing you the oven that I'm going to put at the back of the kitchen so my doll's house is 12 scale and I've already measured the width of the wall at the back and it's 266 millimetres. So I'm going to do a bit of a sketch out here to work out exactly what I want my oven to look like and I'm going to use this table that I got from my doll's house hall in York um, to think about what height I want this to be. I think it's probably going to be a bit taller than the table. Please don't look at the table that I'm working on below. Gosh, what a state. You can tell that I've done loads of crafting on it. So. This height of the table is I think a little bit too small for the worktop of the oven that I'm going to be doing but I'm going to use this just to help me with the scale. So I've decided to make the base of the oven 45mm high which is the same as the little table that I just showed you but then on top of that I'm going to put a stone top which will raise it up probably about another half a centimetre so 5mm on top of that so 50mm altogether. So this sketch isn't to scale but I just wanted to draw out my plan first so that I had a general idea of what I was going to do. So as I draw this, just ignore the measurements that I've written behind. But this is what I want my pizza, oh no, not a pizza oven, I keep wanting to call it a pizza oven because it looks like one but my Tudor oven, obviously they didn't have pizzas in those days. This is what I want my Tudor oven to look like. So to plan out what I need to cut out of the plywood that I'm going to use, I'm just doing another little sketch here. So this is what the front panel is going to look like and also the back panel too. You've noticed that I have put a little lip at each side at the bottom, that's to go around the skirting boards. So taking into account the 4mm at each side, I need to subtract 8mm altogether off the full width, which is 258mm now. So that bottom section needs to be 258mm. The 4mm at either side may be a little bit too big, but I'd rather that I had a bigger gap that I can then fill in later than have it too small and it not fit. So I've just marked out the centre mark there and I'm going to use that to help me to draw my arches that I will cut out. I'm going to have three ovens in total in this freestanding unit. Please ignore the fact that I've written 179 at the centre mark, it should say 129. For the oven I'm going to be using this plywood, this is plywood that I bought off Facebook marketplace and I bought huge sheets for £2 each. I've used it previously when I made a wall for covering the fireplace in the upstairs on the left hand side of the doll's house and it's really easy to cut with a craft knife. Obviously please don't copy how I'm using this craft knife, don't want anyone to get an injury thinking that I'm doing it in the safest way, I'm not an expert at all, I'm just a beginner. So I am cutting away from my fingers because I want to be careful. I did use my metal ruler initially to do the first score line but then I found it easier to do it without for going through all the way through the wood. Once I'd cut out the rectangle, I cut out the two little bits at the side to go over the skirting board so that it looked like this and then I checked it for size before doing the second piece that would be the back panel. At the point of working out how to make the two side panels, I actually made a big mistake here because I thought, oh, I'll be clever and make a little join where it goes underneath the lip and it'll fit really snugly, forgetting that I needed to go over the skirting boards. So I'll whiz through this bit because I then had to restart. And you notice what I'd done wrong when I glued it together here and I'd actually also forgotten to cut out the hatches. So I had to dismantle it and start again. So I drew out the arches and then once I'd drawn it out based on the plan that I'd done, I actually decided I wanted it a little bit bigger. I cut them out and then I moved back onto the side panels and did them correctly this time. So to correct the side panels, I had to chop the bottom bit of it off so that the gap was still there to go over the skirting panels and then I stuck it on to look like this. Not quite such a nice beautiful join, but actually fit for purpose now. 
In this clip you might notice that the arches for the ovens aren't actually cut out yet. That's because I wanted to check that I actually knew how to do the side panels before cutting out the front. But this is what it looked like when it was all together with the arches cut out. I just glued it with some multi-purpose glue and unfortunately I don't have any right angled clamps so I did then just reposition it on the cutting board to make sure that it ran along the right angles there and I put it upside down so that I knew that the top of it would be nice and flat. Once it was dry I then popped it on top of another piece of plywood and drew around it just to make sure that I knew how big the top needed to be, cut it out and then glued it on. Before going any further I did pop it into my doll's house to check that it fit and then I started to paint it. This is just the same paint that I use for the walls of my doll's house so it is colour wheatgrass and I'm just painting it all up before then going on to the top where I'm going to try and make a stone worktop. I used a stippling effect with the paintbrush so that there weren't paintbrush strokes across this piece of furniture. And although there is going to be a stone worktop on here, I did decide to give it a lick of paint anyway, just in case there were any gaps that could be seen through so that you couldn't see the plywood underneath. Once that was dry, I gathered together the things I would need to make the stonework on the top. So I'm just using some um, polyfiller powder. And what I'm doing here is using some yellow ochre acrylic paint and mixing it with some water to make a yellowy liquid that looks like this. And this is what I'm going to use rather than just using plain water to mix with the polyfiller powder. I don't know why it's gone bubbly on the top. Don't know. No idea. I'm mixing my filler in an old yoghurt pot, um, it has had paint in it before as you can see. There is a chance that that brown paint might go into this mix but I'm, I'm alright with that because I think that the colour would still be okay if that happened. I like to recycle things and reuse things. So I'm just spooning my polyfiller in here. You'll notice there's tin foil around my spoon, that's because I don't want polyfiller stuck to my spoon. And I am making a mess, which is what I always do. So I'm mixing up my polyfiller to this sort of consistency. As you can see the colour isn't really intense, that's because I only put a little bit of the acrylic paint in and diluted it with a lot of water. Obviously if you wanted a more intense colour you would add more acrylic paint. So I'm just scraping this mixture now on top of my little oven because I want the stonework top. So I'm just going to gradually layer it up and then um, sort of scrape it into the position that I want it to be. It took me about three yoghurt potfuls of this polyfiller mixture. I made it in stages because it dries quite quickly and I didn't want to make so much that it would go to waste. The colour stayed consistent for each batch because I used the same little cup of painty water that I showed you a few seconds ago. So it's better to make up more of the liquid than more of the polyfiller. Because it doesn't matter quite so much if you've made too much liquid because that can just be thrown away and you've not wasted many materials. It's better than wasting your polyfiller. Once the whole wet top was covered, I then layered it up so that I had the thickness that I wanted and I also put some across the little lip that was overhanging to cover the edge. I've just poured a little bit of water into my pot here to dip my spatula in and I'm just going to use that water to run across the top of the worktop here because the consistency was quite grainy and I wanted to smooth it down to make it more of a stony texture. Now I had to be careful here because the spatula was starting to leave straight lines and I didn't want it to look as if I'd run a spatula across the top. Also worked my way across the edges although I wasn't too worried about this bit because once it's dry I can sand it down and also use my craft knife to shape it and as well as that I don't want it to be a completely perfectly straight line um, because I want it to look like real stone. I did scrape away any excess on the back and the sides because obviously any sort of overhang would mean that the piece of furniture wouldn't fit into the room. Using a pin I then scored fine lines into this to create the effect of there being stone slabs rather than one solid huge piece of stone. So I also paid attention to the edges to show that the stonework is 3D and I did each stone slab a slightly different size and shape and tried to corner off the edges a little. When this is dry I will then go in with my craft knife and do a little bit more scoring away to make it look as if they are stone mason's cuts.
To add some further texture, I used a piece of sandpaper to just gently press it into this whilst it was still wet and to make the imprint of the grains from the sandpaper. And I also put a little bit of water on my finger and then smoothed some areas down and pressed some areas down to make some areas a little bit smoother and more undulating to give the appearance of different cuts and different pieces of stone. Now that all the stonework is dry, I'm going to use my craft knife to gently scrape away at the rough edges and to carve it out as if I was a stonemason. I paid particular attention to the edges that would be up against the walls because any rough bits would stop this from fitting and I also carved on the inside creases that I carved away initially with the pin. Once I'd finished carving, my oven looked like this, so I needed to start putting some colour on it now to add some ageing and also to make it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm using soft pastels here that are basically like coloured chalks and I'm adding lots of black around the ovens because that's where all the charcoal and ash would be and I'm also going to work into the stonework at the top. It's a messy job as you can see, so I'm going to try and scoop up a bit of this and use it too. really hard to know when to stop adding colour, when's too much, um, but I think that's about done so I'm going to pop it into my doll's house and let's see what it looks like. Put it into the doll's house and I don't know what I think, it's a good snug fit but I don't know if the scale's out of line, I think it's a bit big but it's also hard to tell when the floor's this colour and when the fireplace isn't finished so let me know what you think in the comments and I'm hoping it'll start to look a bit better once the other bits around it are finished. <laughs> 